This tutorial is brought to you by coffee. Because if it wasn't for coffee, I would be napping. And you wouldn't be watching this. So cheers to coffee. Hello, hello, my name is Brady Bissett. Welcome and or welcome back to the channel. And today we are talking about how you can improve your shots now and for free using this one trick. And over the years, I've gotten a lot of questions about how do you get your shots to have so much depth or how do your shots look like they're 3D? And really what it has come down to is me trying to incorporate this trick that I'm gonna teach you guys today into all of my shots to really improve your shots and take them to the next level. And this applies to not only video, but photo as well. So if you've seen many of the videos on my channel, you probably know that with cinematography and photo as well, depth is crucial. We really wanna carve out a path for our viewers eyes to go through the entire frame. So over the years, I've really tried to incorporate this technique that I've given the name of the rule of three. I'm not sure, there's probably a million names out there for it, but explaining it a little bit better, I really just try to incorporate three different layers into all of my compositions. And those layers are a foreground, a middle ground, and a background. And then by doing so, you really incorporate this depth and really carve out that path that we talked about through the entire frame from the fore into the middle into the background. Before we go ahead and make things complicated, let's go ahead and look at this example. You've got Sarah, our wonderful model here, sitting there on the rock with the camera. Let's go ahead and talk about the layers. So first and foremost, we have the foreground, which is gonna be Sarah's shoulder, her hair, all buttery, nice, and out of focus. So there you go, you've got the first layer, your eyes are introduced into the frame here. Moving more into the frame, you've got the middle ground, and this is where the action is happening. This is where you got Sarah sitting there with a the camera, her hands are on the camera, you wanna know what's going on with the camera, bam, there's your middle ground. So you've got the four and then the middle ground, let's keep going into the background. And the background is really just gonna be the rocks, the waterfall that you see there in the back. So now we've created this 3D image in a 2D screen, essentially, by creating the foreground, the middle ground, and the background. So rather than having her against a flat background or a blurry background, now we've created all this visual interest and depth by using this technique and adding the layers into the frame. But now we've got all these layers, but it could raise the question since every scene is different. I mean, it's not that easy, it's not that cookie cutter. So which layer do we focus on? Is there a right answer? And the simple answer to that question is no, there's no right answer. Like I said, every scene is different. This is an art. Rules are meant to be bended and broken. So if your subject is right there in the foreground, right here, you can focus on your subject right there and then have the middle ground and the background falling out of focus. You still get that progression of depth and progression of layers or switch it around. The subject is way back there in the back of the room, back corner of the room. That can be the focal plane. And then you've got the foreground and the middle ground progressing into that focus point, which is the background. You still have the layers, you still have my arm here, you still got whatever's right behind me there, and then your subject way out back there. It's just a matter of incorporating the layers, but no, you don't need to focus on a certain layer to create this look. Where things really start to get fun is creating a story with all these layers. Example, you've got Sarah here in the studio recording something that's going to come out soon, so stay tuned for that but let's look at all these layers. They all in a way contribute to telling a story of not only what Sarah by herself is doing in the frame, but now telling the viewer where we are. So now we're adding onto this method and not just adding layers to make it look cool, but we're adding layers to tell the viewer where we are and what the environment they are in is going to be like. And that's the goal, right? We want our viewer to feel and sense as many senses as possible when viewing our work. So to do so, yes, we need to tell them about the environment that they are in essentially while viewing this. So looking at this, yes, Sarah is singing into her mic and she's there. But looking in the foreground, you've got the music stand, probably with some notes on it, some vocal notes to refer to, so on and so forth. So that creates our foreground. Yes, it's out of focus. Yes, it's blurry, but you still get the idea of what is there in the foreground. Moving into the shot, then in the middle ground, you've got Sarah with her mic on, singing into the, or headphones on, singing into the microphone. There's our middle ground. She's tack sharp, in focus, looking great. And then moving on into the background, shooting into the corner of the room to create as much depth as possible, especially in a small room, small working environment. But then also, not only do you have the corner of the room creating that depth and that background, but on the walls, you've got some acoustic panels. And that, that also contributes to telling the story of, okay, 
Now you see the acoustic panels, the mic, the music stand, so on and so forth. She's probably in some kind of recording studio. And now we're not just adding layers to make it look cool, we're telling a story. So work with what you have in the working environment that you're working in to more so contribute to this story of either the product or the character or whatever you're advertising or marketing or shooting you wanna to add to that by adding to this story and using the layers that we're learning about to add in a bunch of these elements. Long story short, use what you have in your working environment to add on to the story of what your viewer should see and should feel and should smell and expand on this story using these layers that really add on to what your focal subject is. But what if you're out in the field running gun shooting and you don't have anything that you necessarily need to add layers in to tell a story? Well, a lot of the times I'll add in layers just to add in this more depth and I'll use anything that I have available. If I'm out in the woods, I'll use a branch or a flower or a tree or grass or anything like that just to add in this foreground. Or sometimes I'll even take my phone and use the reflection just to cast a reflection, like a double reflection of what my subject actually is when I'm shooting. So now you've got like this cool ghosting reflection of your subject acting as the foreground. At the end of the day, this definitely is not the only tool to have in your arsenal to get a great composition. And also at the same time, this is not the only tool that you should have in your arsenal for your creative choice and your creative style. Definitely make sure you're getting this diversity with your shots and your style of shots but I really do hope that this tip is something that you can just keep on your tool belt and help you out with everything. And if you did find this helpful, please hit that like button, the share button if you feel so inclined. And uh, if you're new here, that subscribe button with a little jingle bell there at the bottom. And until next time, go exercise that creative muscle you've got in your brain and uh, I'll see you next week. Class dismissed.